State of Crypto is presented by Tron, connecting the world to the power of cryptocurrency. And it's time to check in with Coindesk Global Policy and Regulation Managing Editor, Nick Day, who's also the editor of Coindesk State of Crypto newsletter and an influencer for as far as Kim Kardashian is concerned. Welcome, Nick. Good morning. How's it going? Influencer for trains. How's it going with you? <laughs> he is. A, he is an influencer for trains and planes, and he, you know, Crypto. that's who I follow for that. Rig info. power. Yeah. <laughs> so the that's financial well, stability oversight. <laughs> What's that? Yes. The financial. <laughs> the Financial Stability Oversight Council, FSOC, they're sounding the alarm bells about unregulated crypto. What does that mean for the industry in general? What exactly are they complaining about? Yeah, so the Financial Stability Oversight Council, which is a intergovernmental entity composed of the top regulators in the U.S., top financial regulators. So you have SEC Chair Gary Gunsler, CFTC Chair Rostin Benham, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen leads the entity. You also have a lot of other top regulators put out a report yesterday in response to U.S. President Joe Biden's executive order on crypto from March. And this is the latest report. We've talked about a lot of the other reports that have been released in the last couple of weeks. This report was kind of the most, you know, one of the most anticipated because it's the first to directly address a lot of the regulatory questions. The regulator said that they believe existing authorities do let them cover a lot of the crypto industry, but in particular, they are calling on Congress to pass a law that clarifies some of the questions, including who handles the spot market for non-security cryptos. Uh, this is a big one, of course, you know. Right now, the CFTC oversees things like fraud in the Bitcoin market, as well as the futures. But technically, they're not the spot market regulator. And so they don't have, you know, some of the same oversights that, for example, the SEC might have on some of the securities overseas. The regulators didn't address, like, any specific legislation they didn't say okay we definitely want the cfdc to be in charge but they said congress needs to clarify this answer at some point because there is a concern that some of the cryptocurrencies might become you know too large too unregulated if congress doesn't act so i mean this might be pure speculation but you know we, we we've had on before tim acid talking about potentially sros uh, self-regulatory uh, organizations uh taking on uh regulation of the spot market uh, you know maybe joint oversight with the cftc and, and sec uh does that open the door for any of this or is this uh you know is this sort of like gee golly we 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 got to regulate this sometime Maybe in the future. Well, an SRO in the U.S., you still kind of have the same issue where Congress would have to authorize it to actually have that kind of official standing, right? So an SRO is certainly one of the options that are available. I don't think the report really addressed it, although I'm still reading through the entire finer details. Uh, but regardless, whatever happens is going to have to go through Congress in some way, shape, or form. Even if an SRO does form, it, you know, once again, you still have to to figure out how it would divide its authorities between the CFTC and the SEC, as well as just where the actual jurisdiction lies, right? So, for example, FINRA is an SRO that works with the SEC overseeing broker-dealers in the U.S. And, you know, it's a very clear relationship. We have an understanding of what the SEC does, what FINRA does, and what kind of influence the SEC has over FINRA. It, this is the kind of thing you'd have to answer if you're talking about an SRO in crypto. Uh, you know, just... Where, where are the agencies? Where are they positioned? What's the actual authority? What's the limit? And this all kind of comes down to Congress. So whatever ends up happening, you're still looking at the same congressional path mm -hmm. of you know need law, uh, need a law. Mm -hmm. Nick, turning to another story, we're watching. There are new developments in the CFTC's case against Uki Dow. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, last night. Uh, so two things happened last night. First, a group of lawyers and software developers who are active in crypto called the LexPunk Army uh, published a or filed a motion to join the case as a friend of the court, basically saying they believe that they have specialized information that they can, you know, send to the court to kind of help clarify some of its uh, decision making. Uh, it's not the same as actually filing that brief. First, they need permission, which is what they asked for yesterday. But basically, they said that the CFTC shouldn't be allowed to just serve Uki Dao by posting on his website or through a help chat bot, that it should be actually you know, identifying and serving the individuals that it believes are responsible 
or it risks, you know, some constitutional violations and some bad precedent. At the same time, or, you know, sometime between them writing that brief and filing it, the court actually did rule that the CFTC could serve Ukidao through the help chatbot, and it could be retroactive to September 22nd, meaning that mm. the DAO or someone from the DAO has three weeks from September 22nd to respond, meaning, you know, October 13th or 14th, which is next week, or the CFTC can win a default judgment. Now, what happens next is a little up in the air. Uh, a lot of lawyers say that they, you know, we're going to see more friends of the court filings, so more attorneys plan to get involved. We're also going to see them say, okay, well, you know, maybe you can uh, put a stay on this ruling or otherwise try and, uh, you know, convince the judge to uh, hold off and look at more information before uh, entering any kind of default judgment. 